Good morning, Mink Kitty. How are you doing this morning? Let's get your blinds up. Oh, shoot. Oh. The string's busted. I am sorry, Mink Kitty. I'm going to have to fix the blind. I know. What a drag. Good morning, it's Jerry with I Love RV Life. Yep, that's how we're starting the morning off. Uh, the string has broke inside this, and if you've got these, you've had the strings break. You know what I'm talking about. And if you haven't had one break, well, just it's just a matter of time. Um, a year or two is about all they're gonna last, and then these strings break. The good news is it looks a little wonky to be able to repair, but it's really not a big deal. I've done it several times. I haven't done this window yet but um, there's something broke on the inside and they just won't stay up so it's, it's a pretty easy fix it won't take us too long to uh, take care of this and i want to show you how to do it so this is my little handy uh nine in one greenly tool i've talked about this before what a lifesaver in a camper first thing you're going to have to do is take these screws off at the bottom that hold the spacer and the tie down string and then these long screws you'll see them they look like that one on each side and I'm going to go ahead and just um, cut the string loose I think I'll take care of that in a minute and then I've got to get it here at the top two screws that hold it here in the top it's just four of them two at the bottom two at the top Now these aren't a bad, this isn't a bad blind really and truly, it's just, um, it's just the use of it and uh, the friction causes these strings to get stress on them and then they just break loose. Ooh, that's a long blind, they wanted to make sure that that thing wasn't going anywhere. Thank you Heartland, we appreciate that. It's, while the blind stays in place, the strings don't. <laughs> That's okay. All right. And I've talked about this before. I am left-handed and I'm having to use my right hand. So it is an alien environment. Boom, there we go. All right, let's go over here and fix this thing. The tools for the repair are really pretty basic. First of all, uh, buy you some uh, nylon string. Uh, I, I probably bought this at Walmart. We were out on the road. I've had this spool for about two or three years now. This is not my first repair. It's just the first time I've recorded it. I don't know why I haven't done it before now. This is a good quality, very durable nylon string. This is going to last a long time. Um, I couldn't get the exact shade of the blind, but it's close. Um, it's so close that I don't think anyone will notice that I've done the repair. Um, I will say this, this seems to be a little bit stronger than what I've taken down. The biggest, the biggest issue with the string is to make sure you get something with a similar diameter. And uh, you don't want to get something that's just purely like a cotton string or a linen string. You want to get something that's got um, you know some uh, nylon or something like that in it you know the type that if you cut it you have to burn the ends to keep it from fraying that's what you want to be able to use uh, a pair of scissors i'm going to use my charcoal lighter just to burn the ends and you're going to have to use a sharp knife be careful with this just to pop the end caps off so okay this won't be too difficult okay so we've got a top and a bottom and once you take these screens loose this thing just gets completely wonky uh, first things that I'm going to do is just cut these ends off just to get them out of the way. I'll put them back on later. And then if you'll notice here, I've got these little ends on each one of these. These have to be popped off. I'm going to use a sharp knife for that. And just very carefully ease those caps off. You don't want to, you don't want to break this. Just ease the cap off. You could use a butter knife if you don't want to use a sharp knife. Just something to get in there. You could use a putty knife. And again, an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. 
so uh, just be super 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 careful when you do this and I'm just going to ease that knife into that little little crack area right there and just see so just kind of slip that bad boy and then look at that that whole part comes off and look at here there's where she broke it broke on the inside and that's why it quit working you little booger you so remember what we're dealing with here you're going to have a you're going to come down one side cross go to the bottom come down the other side cross come out the other side that's very very important that you remember that okay all right so now we know why it happened and why did it happen? Just because it did. There's really no reason behind it. And like I said, be so careful dealing with this. Don't whack your finger off. There we go. And boom, look at that. There's the other. There's the top. Okay. So the top portion right here in the middle is going to have the spring that's what gives this thing the elasticity to uh, go up and down and kind of hold it in place so that uh, we're going to take that and I'm going to come here with my scissors and I am going to cut that right here cut it right here set that spring aside and so I can rethread this I'm going to cut the ends off <laughs> it also if you're left-handed get your pair of left-handed scissors uh, there we go all right there we go the fun starts pull these old broken strings out just kind of come here in the middle and just kind of cut it and then I'll pull it from the top and from the bottom pull those old strings out throw them aside I'm surprised the kitties haven't come down here and tried to help me today I think Joan's entertaining him so that I can film today and we go and you can see how it's look at that see see how it frayed and broke Sometimes you see it coming, sometimes you don't. All right, here we go. Here comes the fun part. All right, okay, make sure you inspect your string, make sure there's no kinks or you don't want to put bad string after doing this job. And again, um, I've cut the end of this off and you're not gonna be able to thread it with this end like this. That This nylon string is gonna fray and it's just gonna make the biggest mess. Okay, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna heat this and then I'm gonna touch it. If you feel cautious about this rightly so you can blister your finger because this can be really hot you know put your glove on I've done it so many times I know what my touch needs to be I only need to heat it for just a second and I'm gonna reach up here and I'm gonna roll it all right and if you feel very uncomfortable about doing something like that look if you if this is too hot and you do what I just did you will blister your fingers and it will hurt it will hurt 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 and um, you know this is a do as I say not as I do so if you're a little cautious about that put your glove on and um, do that so you don't blister your finger. But again, I've done it so many times, I'm not worried about it. I'm gonna get me plenty here to work with. And off we go. Um, I've got crud here that's bulked up in this thing over from when it busted. Here we go. And you want to replace the string just like you took it off. It's almost a, a threading fashion. What I do is I take the folds and I pinch them like this. Can you see that? I pinch it. And then that makes it so much easier to thread through the next one. Just pinch and thread. 
and I'm not going to film this whole thing of me doing this. This will take me probably about, I don't know, five minutes or so to do the whole thing. The big issue here is do not cut your string. You want to do this in one piece. We're going to cut it in a minute, but I want to thread as one entire piece. And see, by uh, melting that in and putting that little point on it, it almost acts as a threading needle. And that's very important here. So I'm just going to keep going. Uh, insert music here. Okay, we're reaching the top now. There we go. Don't you wad up on me now. We've been through too much together. Okay. And, and here we go. So now I'm going to take it, if you'll notice right here, there's a little brass grommet right here. And I'll take this piece and stick it right in there. All right, off we go. All right, so that's side one. And I'm gonna leave maybe, and I don't need this much, I'm gonna leave about two feet here on the top. And I'm gonna come down here on the bottom and I'm gonna leave, I don't know, a ton more than I need on the bottom. I'm gonna go ahead and Keep him from fraying. And now we're going to do the other side. Kind of in a reverse order here. So I'll start at the top this time and work my way down. And now well, we've reached the bottom, and I'm going to stick it through just like that. Pull me a bunch of extra through. Much, much more than I need. Throw that off to the side. I kind of just collapse this like so, just to make it easier to work with. Okay, here we go. So now we've got the top and the bottom. The bottoms have to cross. I'm going to work on the bottom first. And I'm going to go over here to this side and make sure you don't get a knot or anything in your, again I've stressed this, make sure you don't get a knot in your string. Okay. and slide it back on gently 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 and take my little piece here that I took off and thread it through the hole so there's a little I don't know if you can see it you can't there's two little metal tracks in here that this has to go into and this is the, probably the most aggravating portion of the whole thing is just getting those to line up in those tracks just right. And once you get it in that track, it just, boom, it pops. And it just snaps right in. Finger tight. Finger tight. <clears throat> Don't pound on it with a hammer. None of that. All right. Here we go. 
Now then, I have got, I'm going to stretch this all the way out. Like so. Alright, I've got plenty of string. And I'm going to rebunch it and I'm going to leave, again, quite a long piece here at the bottom. We're going to take the slack out in the middle. The next task is getting this spring tied on here at the top. And you want this as close to center as possible. And I'm going to put a really good knot in here. I'm going to go ahead and cut this down some so I can work with it. couple knots in here to make sure that it's really good and tight for all the sailors that are out there you probably know some really wicked knots that you could use but I found just a like about a triple knot it seems to do the trick I'll do an extra spin on that one it's not pretty, but it is not going anywhere. There. And cut the excess off. Okay. And we're going to do it again. That's going to stay and I'm going to trim the excess off. It's really important that you do that. Go ahead and kind of get that end. All right now what's going to be really important is getting this right here in the center as much as possible. So I'm going to take all my slack out of here. center this guy. Remember now you're dealing with opposite sides here. There we go. And that guy's looped up right there. I'm going to put him just about in the center. A little slack out little slack out okay so we've got him right at about the center okay okay almost done let's put our track back on And I'm going to put my end cap back on. Finger tight. Okay. Let's go hang him back up. We're almost done. Okay. That wasn't too bad, was it? It's pretty simple. We're just going to uh, hang it back up now. It'll take us but a second. We're going to put him back up just like he came down. Gently let that stretch out, like so. And here we go. All right. Tops back on. These are those uh, little plastic ends that the string ties around and then you put a little knot in it on both sides. I'm going to put those back. One of the things you've got to do next is put these guys on. Okay, so you'll see Joan's hands in here. I'm going to thread this in one side and this is a little 
a little tedious, so you're going to have to have some patience here to get this through. There we go. There's that. And then there's that. So you want to make a little loop through here. And I'll screw that on like so. Boom. So there's one. Let's do it one more time. Joan, you're doing a great job. I go in like so, out like so, and then I'm going to screw that guy on. Okay. Keep hold on. Now I'm going to pull some, ten add some tension to this, just like so. And I'm going to run it around a couple times. And I'm going to tie me a knot in it. A nice double knot. And that'll hold that one in place. Okay, let go for a second, Joan. And then I'm going to pull this one tight. There we go. And do the same thing here. Put me a little loop in it. And tie me a nice double knot. Thanks, Joan. You're welcome. <clears throat> and tie me a double knot in it. <clears throat> then I'm just going to trim this excess off, like so. And again, burn it so it don't fray. Be careful. A little bit goes a long way. There you go. All right, last thing to do is put my frilly blind back up. Foo-foo Foo that up and make it look nice. There we go. How about that? Done. Less than 30 minutes. Super easy. And that should last me another couple years maybe, who knows. <laughs> so it's not a bad process. Um, I think the trick is, is just a little bit of patience and uh, make sure you cut enough extra string length that um, you're not sorry when you get to the end. And it's just, and it really does help. Thanks, thanks to Joan for just uh, bringing her uh, very uh, qualified hands to kind of hold it in place while I tied my little knot, put a little tension. This does not have to be, you know, banjo tight. But I have a repaired blind, another reason. I love RV life. <laughs>